Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight on Extra Bees. If you're a fan of forestry bees, you are definitely going to enjoy some of the cool things that Benny, the author of Extra Bees, has given us. There's a bunch of machines, a ton of bees, and all kinds of new stuff to start processing. So uh, a little bit of knowledge of forestry bee mechanics is probably going to assist you here. But you know what? I actually think that even some of you guys who don't like bees so much might really be interested in this spotlight because it's possible that some of the things you don't like about bees might be changed by this mod add-on for forestry. Uh, it gives you the ability to make changes to your bees and do all kinds of crazy stuff and it basically adds a ridiculous number of different bees out there for you to breed. So if you're really a big fan of getting a bunch of different bees and breeding them all together, this one's definitely for you. And if you don't like some of the restrictions that some of the bees have and you'd like to be able to manipulate your bees a little bit more than some of the machines added by this mod will definitely help you out. So let's get started taking a look at the different tiers of bee machines and also the different bees available. All right, here goes nothing. So the very first um, machine I want to show you from this mod is actually one of my favorite and it's one of the very early ones. It's this guy called the Acclimatizer. The Acclimatizer is made uh, using some lava and water cans and some redstone and this block an apiarist machine. Pretty cool. The apiarist machine is actually used for all kind of the, the tier one blocks. It's, it's kind of like a, a machine block if you will. So apiarist machine makes you an Acclimatizer, an apiarist data bank, and an indexer. All of these are awesome, by the way. Um, and then you have to use it to upgrade to a genetic machine, which is your second tier machine block. Genetic machines make some other machines as well as the advanced genetic machine, which is like your third tier machine block. So, you know, consider this like your machine and advanced machine blocks from industrial craft, but then there's a third tier that you can go up to. Pretty cool. Uh, so the acclimatizer is really awesome. I like a lot of things about it. Uh, first off, you can see I have a bee in there, and I'm going to show you what's up with him in a minute. But right now, I've got this forest princess here. And one of the things you might know about um, bees is they really only like to live in certain areas. And you can determine where they're going to want to live by putting it in your bee elizer and showing you the second page. It shows you that the climate is normal and um, the temperature tolerance is zero. And the humidity is normal and the temperature tolerance and the humidity tolerance are zero. So basically what this thing is saying to you is this bee only likes to live in normal areas. He won't live in a snow biome, he won't live, or I guess she, because it's a princess, won't live in the desert um, because the humidity and tolerances. So if you want, you can adjust this by placing your princess in that slot right there. Cool. A little exclamation point is telling you that there's no acclimatizer material. Uh, in this slot, you can place four items. Ice, lava, sand, or water. So if we were to place a stack of ice in there, for example, I'm just going to get a bunch and just toss it right in. There we go. Uh, it's going to start processing, and it's going to take a while. It uses a bit of Minecraft jewels per tick. Uh, max input is three. You can see it's currently being charged by my... Uh, redstone energy cell right here, and it's going to process, and it's going to take some time and use the ice. And what that's going to do is it's going to lower the temperature tolerance uh, from none to uh, one. So you'll be able to have, um, you know, a bee that exists in a colder environment. You can also use sand um, to adjust the humidity or water or lava cells. So right here, I've got uh, the princess that I pulled out of here. You'll see this is the same exact princess. Oh, look, it already went to down one. Awesome. So this uh, bee will now uh, accept living in a colder environment, one lower than normal temperature. And this one I used lava cans, uh, and this one had normal up one. Awesome. Uh, you can also, like I said, use sand and water to adjust the humidity tolerance. So the acclimatizer will make it a little bit easier to have multiple bee species in the same area, even if by default they wouldn't have liked that temperature. Cool. Now the next block I'm going to show you is going to be blank by default. This guy is cool. He's called the Apiarist's Data Bank, and you can see that it requires a piece of redstone, one of those machines, and an Apiarist's database. Pretty neat. The Apiarist's database, by the way, is uh, also pretty cool. Let's check him out. You can see the Apiarist's database. It's basically the same thing in item form, so you can open it up as an item. So you can carry it around as an item or use it as a block, whichever you prefer. Um, but right now it's blank because what this guy does is it shows you all the bee species you've discovered via, um, you know, combining your bees and mutations. Uh, however, we've got an advanced cheating item here that we can get called the Master Apiarist Database. No recipe for this guy. It's a cheat item that unlocks all the information in the Apiarist Database. It's basically a floor in a box. Let's check it out. By uh, right-clicking on this guy, you'll see that it quickly populates all these guys right here. Pretty neat. So uh, 
you'll see that right now it's blank, but by using the cheat item, you'll have access to all the different bee species that are both in vanilla forestry and in the uh, extra bees forestry. Awesome. Look at all this stuff. Look at all the different bees that are available added by extra bees. So you can see your basic forest and common and meadows. Um, and you can see over here on the tab side, it gives you information about the genome and the products of what it produces, the climate and their tolerances. Pretty cool. Um, whether or not it's you know acceptable in different biomes. Resultant mutations. So you can see how to get mutations. Uh, that kind of cool stuff. Further mutations. Awesome. So you can see how to get your common bees, and you can see what you can do with your common bees and where you can go with them. So the APRS database is a great way for you to track what you've already discovered about your bees. Uh, you can also check out the different branches if you want. So you can see the noble branch here, and it'll tell you the different bees inside the noble branch. And then when you click on them, for example, Imperial, it'll jump to that tab in the database, and you can see the stuff like that, like what kind of stuff it creates, how much royal jelly, and dripping combs. Awesome. And uh, the mutations that, you know, create this bee and then the mutations that it can turn into. Awesome. Ooh, relic bees, they sound cool. They produce ancient combs. So there's a ton of bees. Like, lots. Real huge, massive amounts. And of course, because there's more bees, there's gonna be um, more combs and more items. So if we jump to the tab in um, NEI that shows you all the items from the bees here, you can see a massive number of new combs all kinds of stuff. Petroleum combs, rocky combs, glowing combs, almost every item in the game, and even some, like, you know, advanced, uh, even modded items can be made from this stuff. Like, crazy amounts of stuff. Electrum comb. Neat. Sounds cool. Uh, platinum comb. Steel comb. Uh, indigo comb. Like, craziness, right? Um, and then you, of course, get extra propolis. You get lots of different drops that can be used for all kinds of stuff. You can get milk. You can get melon drops. Uh, amber drops, pretty neat. So all the different items and stuff that you can get uh, as a result of extra bees will be indexed in this awesome block or item called the Apiarist's database. And all the information that you discover will be in there. But of course, if you cheat the item in, you'll have access to everything. But by default, it's only what you've already discovered. And so far, I haven't discovered any mutations. And while we're on the topic of bees, I should mention that there's one, two, three, and four different beehives that are added to world generation. You get this guy called the watery bees. I wonder what they produce. Uh, you get this stuff called the rocky bees that can produce, uh, I believe, stone or cobblestone. Uh, we've got uh, embittered bees and princesses. And then we've got uh, these last two here, which are the marbled guys. So there's a bunch of bees that added to world gen, and you're going to have to mutate them and combine them, uh, you know, to get the more advanced ones that extra bees gives you. Cool. Now, one problem you might have with all these extra bees is where to store them. Bee storage is kind of a nuisance as it is, and now you've got a ton more. So let's take a look at the indexer. The indexer is basically an infinitely sized chest that can store any number of bees, and you can sort them right here. All you got to do to place your bee into the chest is shift click. Boom, right there, and you'll see that it gets added. Um, so all kinds of stuff going on, and you can sort by uh, nothing. So right now it's just kind of in any order, whatever order you uh, place the bees in. So let's get ourselves a couple more uh, drones. I'll get some rocky and water drones. That should be cool. Looking good. Awesome. And if I want, I can sort by species. So it sorts all the princesses of the forest type and then the drones of the forest type. And then meadows, modest, tropical, rocky, water. So it's sorting by species. And of course, there's a scroll bar here. So if you have a lot of bees in the indexer, you can go ahead and scroll through. Uh, next up, you can uh, go to type, and it'll sort all the princesses first, followed by all the drones. Awesome. So the indexer is a great way to store a ton of drones. And you can see it's going to require one of those APRS machines, a good number of chests, and a diamond. Not bad. And I'll just note to you that you can, of course, pump items in and out using pneumatic tubes or build craft pipes. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, just pump items in, pump items out. Not bad at all. Um, and there is plans in the future for a more advanced um, pipe and uh, an advanced indexer that does even more cool stuff. Neat. 
So now that I've showed you all the first tier of machines, let's go into the second tier created by the genetic machine. Uh, this is how you're going to create some of the uh, cool genetic stuff that allows you to manipulate your bees a little bit. You're going to need a good amount of redstone energy, so you can see I've got a redstone energy cell going on right here. Let's also check in on our climatizer. You can see the forest princess still has the down one, and it's using more ice to try and get a further progress. Now. Onto the gene pool. One of the first machines that you're going to use here uh, requires some tanks and some gold in that genetic machine. Uh, and remember that thing requires a basic circuit board, so you're going to have to get pretty advanced into forestry before you can make one of these. This is essentially an industrial craft recycler for bees. How does it work? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple princesses. Um, all you got to do, and I believe if you analyze your princesses, they'll do a little bit better. So let's go ahead and analyze them in our Bealyzer. Cool. Simply place your princess in the left slot. And the gene pool will process the princess, break it down into its base components, and give you what's called liquid DNA. And if we come over here, you'll see it's now got 25% full of liquid DNA. Awesome. And uh, it's got a little, uh, you know, slot over here on the left. It'll keep up and, uh, you know, kind of like a little buffer there. So we can get liquid DNA out of the gene pool. And this is used for quite a few things. Princesses give you a lot more liquid DNA than drones do. And if you've analyzed your drones um, or princesses, you'll get even more. So uh, your best bet here is to uh, go ahead and analyze them. But for example, if we had a drone that we did not analyze, you're not going to get nearly as much. So right now we're at 75% full. Let's see how we go with a forest drone that's not analyzed. And you'll see that we really don't get much. We went up to 77% full. So much less liquid DNA from drones. Keep that in mind. And this stuff is used for a couple of the other machines that are going to require some liquid DNA to do some of their work. Let's take a look at one of them now called the Sequencer. This guy is pretty cool. Um, what he does is he allows you to break down any of the uh, species that you can find in world gen. So you can't do this with any of the mutated species except common. Common's the only exception to that. Um, and you can see right now uh, we're currently in the meadows format. So we're working on the meadows species and we've got some blank templates in the bottom slot here. Uh, blank templates are made with the following. Uh, glass panes and some honeydew. So you're going to need some honeydew in order to even use this machine at all. And once you've uh, got that, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a Meadows Princess and just place that in the slot there. And the sequencer is going to sequence the DNA of the Meadows Princess and try and establish a template for Meadows Princesses uh, using the blank template right here. Um, so go ahead and let this guy run for a moment, and we'll get a look. This is the progress bar on the right here, by the way. So this little uh, image will fill in with more color as we get the Meadows Princess uh, sequenced a bit more. And once we've completed the sequencing, um, we'll get the, um, oh, it looks like a corrupt template. So that one didn't work out too well. Let's go ahead and throw a Forest Princess in there and see how we do. The sequencer and uh, the uh, other block, the splicer, kind of work together. They're kind of being phased out right now, but I wanted to be complete and show you guys how these work. But there's a better way to handle this uh, with tier three machines. So my personally, I might not even use these in my you know actual playing, but uh, the tier three machines do a little better job of this. But like I said, wanted to show you. So we got a decent amount of progress out of our forest. You can see it's currently in the forest template, and it'll give us a warning if we try and put another type of of, um, of B in there. So if I put a meadows in there, it'll say it doesn't match the current species. Okay, once you've got your templates, and I can get one out of uh, the screen here, so let's get ourselves a uh, tropical template, for example. So get rid of the corrupt one. And I'm going to come over here and place, uh, I had another tropical in, let's just put it in there. And I found it's best to analyze your B before you uh, throw them in the splicer and give that some time. Now you're going to have to supply this guy with power as well, and you're also going to have to give him some liquid DNA. And it's going to use, or it's supposed to use, some of this liquid DNA, but I think this block's a little bugged right now and doesn't use it. But let's come back in a moment once the Meadows Princess has been converted to a Tropical Princess using the splicer. And there we go. You can see we got a uh, Tropical Princess out of the Tropical Template. Cool. Uh, this thing does take a while to run, and uh, sometimes it's unsuccessful, and these uh, tropical templates do eventually wear out and break down, so you have to make more. But like I said, the splicer and the sequencer are kind of being phased out in preference for some of the tier 3 machines that we've got set up over here. So let's check these guys out.
So the tier three machines is where the rubber really hits the road with terms of manipulating your bees and giving them different properties and different abilities. And the first step in this line is this block right here called the isolator. Now in order to use this, you're gonna need an empty serum vial. Um, these guys are made, as you can see, with some gold, some royal jelly, and some glass panes, and that gets you two. So you're gonna need a good amount of uh, some initial bee species to get that going. Uh, simply place your empty serum vial in the right slot there. On the left, you're gonna to wanna to set up um, with uh, a forest princess or any type of princess or drone that has the trait that you're looking to replicate. And what this guy can do is he can start analyzing and breaking down your bees and getting any trait out of the bee. So anything that is on this page or this page or, you know, pretty much any page, I think. Well, one and two, I guess, right? Are pretty much where you're gonna find out. So you can get the nocturnal trait if you want, or you can get yourself the uh, speed trait or the fertility trait, anything off of this forest princess. Uh, so let's go ahead and place her right in there. And once you've got some power flowing into the block, uh, you'll see the isolator starts running. And these little bars go straight across, and it's isolating one of the genes in the Forest Princess. Let's see which one we get when it's done. Now this is one of the more advanced blocks, so note how much power it's using. Right now it's using 50 Minecraft joules per tick, with a maximum input of 75 Minecraft joules per tick. A very expensive uh, machine with regards to uh, energy use. Uh, but once it completes, we get ourselves a pretty nifty serum vial. And do note that there's sometimes a random chance that you won't get anything out of your bee. So uh, go ahead and give this guy a little bit of time and you will eventually get this guy. No temperature tolerance serum. So this serum, which is currently empty by the way, can adjust your bee to have no temperature tolerance. That doesn't sound like the kind of trait that I want to pass on. So let's try and get another one. You can place the same serum vial back in here and you'll get a new serum, or you can put another empty one in. Well, this time I got a no humidity tolerance serum. Well, that doesn't sound any good either. Let's try for another. Oh, this is a productivity serum, which would be nice if it was better than slowest. Let's try for another. So obviously I'm analyzing, by the way, a pretty basic bee. So there's not much that this bee has that I probably want to replicate, but I'm just giving you guys the idea of how the block works. Let's see if I get anything good now. Ooh, flowers pollination serum. That sounds pretty good. So for example, I've got a uh, water drone here, and as you can see, this guy requires lily pads to do his, um, you know, you know, like thing requires damp humidity um, kind of stuff like that um, but let's say I didn't want to have lily pads near my water drones I wanted to have flowers well now I've got this awesome flowers pollination serum so let's see how to use it to change this water drone instead of requiring lily pads nearby to require to have uh, flowers nearby like the forest princess pretty easy to do. Um, however, first we're going to need to get ourselves a synthesizer. You can see right now it's empty. What do we have to fill the synth synthesizer with? Well, I've got a gene pool over here, so it's a pretty good guess that I'm going to need some liquid DNA. So I'm going to go ahead and process a uh, forest princess and get myself some liquiducts so I can transfer this over. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and hook it up and a lever. So the liquid DNA will travel through the liquid ducts. The only way to transfer liquid DNA from one block to another, by the way, is with liquid ducts. There's no way to put it in cans at the moment. And you can see we've got some liquid DNA in here. So we've identified the flowers pollination serum, but right now you can see it's empty. In order to fill it up, we gotta put some liquid DNA in there. And by placing the flower pollination serum empty in the right slot, you can see this little uh, progress bar moving up. And it's taking the liquid DNA, and it's gonna store it inside the serum. Awesome. And the more liquid DNA we put in there, the better. So now we've got one charge of flowers pollination serum, and you can see it used a bit of the liquid DNA. Cool. I'm pumping more in there, by the way, at the moment. And once it completes again, it will have two charges. So we can go ahead and use this thing multiple times. So once you've identified a serum, you're in pretty good shape. Awesome. Now, the more charges it has, the lower the quality. At this point in the mod, um, there is no effect uh, of quality, but there is something in the future that will change that. Um, we'll talk about quality in a moment, but first I want to show you the replicator, uh, another important block. So what the replicator does is say you've discovered something that you want to use a lot, 
For example, the flowers pollination serum. You can place that in the left, and you can place a empty serum vial in the right, and it'll replicate that for you. So, pretty neat. Uses, again, quite a lot of Minecraft jewels, but this way you can have, um, you know, multiple flower pollination serums and uh, use them all over the place. Requiring lots of power, as you can see, but it'll replicate that style of thing. So, flowers pollination serum to empty serum vial will give you yet another flower pollination one. Awesome. Of course he's empty. We have to fill him up over here in the synthesizer. Nice. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys the next block is the purifier. This guy uh, is pretty easy. Just place your flower pollination serum in there. And again, you're going to need some liquid DNA. And what it's going to do is it's going to um, purify the serum using more liquid DNA. So right now it's giving me a little warning, not enough liquid DNA. That's not a problem. Let's get some over there. And now that we've pumped more liquid DNA into the purifier block, it's going to go ahead and purify your serum. Like I said, right now, there's really not much that the quality does. But you can see it's a pretty expensive machine requiring a lot of power, and eventually uh, quality will play a role. And if you're uh, trying to use this serum with too low a quality in the future, you might run into problems and negative effects, or you might wind up even killing your bee. So in the future versions of this mod, quality is going to be more important. Right now, not so much. And again, it should be noted that I'm using a um, redstone energy cell right now, set to 100 Minecraft joules per tick output. These machines are very expensive in terms of cost and uh, energy. So you can see, you know, uses 100 Minecraft joules per tick. This guy uses 50. This machine over here is using 50. Very expensive machines. So trust me when I tell you that you want to uh, have lots of energy to power these guys. So the final one to show you is the inoculator. This is what puts it all together. So I've got my water drone here. Remember, it requires lily pads. Place him over there on the right. And it's telling you there's no serum at the moment. I'm going to put the flowers pollination serum over here in the uh, left. I'm going to put the one with average quality. Cool. And this guy is going to start draining power uh, right now. Uh, max input is 37 Minecraft joules. It's using 25. And this one just takes a good amount of time. So this is the indicator, the progress bar here. And as it goes down, it's going to go ahead and get that water drone, the flowers pollination status. Nice. Let's come back when it's done. Looks like we're about complete here. Yep, almost done. There we go. And uh, you can see that it used up one of the charges of the flowers pollination serum, but this guy appears to still require lily pads. So let's give him another chance. Um, take a moment and see. Oh, look, it changed the inactive over here to flowers. Gotcha. So let's go ahead and uh, run it through again and see if it'll change the active genome to also only require flowers. So it only changed one of the genomes. And here goes nothing. Looks like the bee has completed, and because he's done, he automatically moved down to the bottom slot here. Uh, and you could use this top area as a buffer, by the way. And we can see also by mousing over him that he requires flowers, and it's both the primary active and secondary inactive gene. So now this water drone will only pollinate with flowers, no longer needing lily pads. And like I said, every type of gene can be sequenced. Anything from species to lifespan to speed, etc. Um, you can even uh, filter out the effects. You can see right here I wound up getting an effect cancellation serum. So I could use this on a jungle bee to cancel the effect of the poison. So you no longer get poison from jungle bees if you inject them with the effect cancellation serum. Pretty cool. Uh, and like I said, you can get species, any species for that matter. So if you got yourself, uh, for example, like a really advanced bee, like the imperial bees, and you wanted to get the uh, imperial species, you could change your species using these blocks. Again, more advanced and complicated than the tier two ones, uh, because the splicer here can only um, do uh, sequencing and splicing of the bees that are world gen. You can't get them from the more advanced bees, but these blocks can. You can get any item from the isolator, any gene at all. That is pretty awesome. And with that, guys, we're getting pretty close to wrapping up what we've got here. Uh, we've got uh, the serums, which you saw, with a bunch of charges in them. Cool. Um, the empty serum vials. Genomes are not active yet, but genomes will eventually be uh, multiple uh, serums combined into one. So you'll be able to combine your serums all into one. So you could have, for example, uh, flowers pollination plus effect cancellation serum uh, in one item, and the genome is what that's going to be, but not implemented just yet. Uh, you've also got some extra 
extra frames here, which are really pretty neat. We've got the chocolate frame, which gives faster production of items. Uh, you've got the soul frame, which gives you a better chance for mutation. So if you're really looking to mutate your bees, soul frames are a good approach to take. Just take an impregnated frame and add some soul sand. Awesome. Uh, you've got the healing frame, this guy, which gives them a longer lifespan, so they'll just kind of stick around and live longer. And uh, then the restraint frame here lowers the area of effect that they hurt you if they have negative effects. So if you have, for example, the poisonous bees, uh, you'll have to get closer to the beehive with a restraint frame in there to uh, not get hurt as much. And I think that about wraps up all the cool stuff you can get from extra bees. Uh, do note that there are some liquid metals that liquid bees adds that you can use in your thermionic fabricator. So, uh, you know, go ahead and hook up your thermionic fabricator and check those out. And there's also um, some helmets and casts and stuff. Uh, so you can get different tools using the casts uh, at a reduced cost in your thermionic fabricator. That's one of the extra things that extra bees adds. That's about it though. I think I've covered uh, everything in this mod. So it's really a neat mod. Lots and lots of cool stuff that you can do with bees. Uh, you can manipulate them, change them, do all kinds of crazy stuff. And the more crazy you want to get, the more expensive it's going to be with regards to uh, liquid DNA and Minecraft jewels. You're going to need a pretty good power source to power these machines. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on the Extra Bees Mod Spotlight. Hope you guys have enjoyed checking it out. Definitely a mod worth investigating. It's not quite complete yet. I think Benny has a lot of cool ideas for future things, which I've already talked a few of them about. Um, yeah, but there's, there's even cooler stuff coming, trust me. Uh, so definitely check out this mod. And the number of bees it adds is ridiculous. Like, you can get almost any item out of your bees if you really, uh, you know, work towards it. All right, guys, take it easy.